Ahead of game one of the Eastern Conference Final between the Florida Panthers and the Carolina Hurricanes alongside three-time Stanley Cup champion Aaron Ward and David Peñota. I'm Rafon Gaffar with the Ford Creed, and our playoff coverage is presented to you by Bodog. When it feels like all that's left is work hard, it's time to play again. Easily find your next favorite game with Bodog. Free casino games, poker tips, and sports odds. Make a play. All right, Aaron, let's jump right into it. This matchup on the ice is incredible between these two teams. Obviously, the Florida Panthers beating the best two teams in the National Hockey League. They now get to play against a third, but it's the matchup behind the two benches that might be the most intriguing. Yeah, I'm familiar with both guys, too. I'd be remiss if I didn't touch on the fact that these guys have a pretty good relationship. Uh, Roddy clearly played for Paul Maurice through his time in, in Carolina. He then was assistant coach to, uh, to Paul Maurice when he was in Carolina. These guys know each other very well. In fact, I would say that one of the reasons why Rod is in, is in the place he is in is because he learned so much from and mimicked what uh, Paul Maurice was as a coach and what he did behind the bench. So uh, knowing each other, uh, at familiarity, I think all these things could be used as an advantage or disadvantage, however you look at it. But these, these guys have a mutual respect. And I think it's just kind of funny how it's worked out. The 2002, they went to Stanley Cup Finals together. And now they're in the Eastern Conference Finals, uh, what, 21 years later, uh, matched up against each other. Dave, when you look at it, the Florida Panthers, they beat the best team in the National Hockey League. Then they beat the second best team. And now they're going to play against the Carolina Hurricanes as, as another prize for them. But these, <sighs> these, these Florida Panthers, they just don't stop what they're doing. No, they, they don't. They're relentless. They're aggressive. They're physical. And they're doing it by committee. If you look at their team, I mean, Matthew Kachuk is leading the way with 16 points so far in, in these playoffs for the Panthers. Carter Verhage right behind him. But if you look at the guys that have popped in, in you know, goals in this, at least in the last series, again, doing it by committee. Sam Bennett contributing. Sam Reinhardt contributing. Brandon Montour has six goals going into the Eastern Conference Final. You look up and down this lineup and you're getting contributions from Lundell and Duclair and so on and so on. So they're able, their depth, is one of their biggest weapons. And yes, the physicality played a big factor for them against the Toronto Maple Leafs. Sam Bennett, Kachuk, Cousins, that first line, really doing damage and shutting down the Leafs for the most part. But they're able to spread that, that depth up and down that lineup. And when you've got Sergei Bobrovsky uh, playing at the Vesna caliber status that he is, I mean, you add that to the recipe of the rest of this team. This is what these Panthers should have looked like in the regular season. Wardo, and now we're seeing them here in the postseason just playing as, at this pace. I mean, you're touching on it. I think they've not gotten the respect that they deserve because of the fact that, I mean, listen, this is a President's Trophy winning team just less than a year ago. So they get into the playoffs and, and they lay an egg. But they're still, in terms of continuity, a rock-solid team. They make some changes. So the disrespect comes with they didn't perform up to snuff in the regular season. Right, they were trying to find their identity. They got a brand new coach. They've got all kinds of things working against them. Bobrovsky's not the playoff Bobrovsky that they they have now. So now you get to the finals, or sorry, the the, the playoffs, and this is a team that's all come together at the right time, and they're playing with house money. They look at what up the, what they're up against. They've beaten the best team. Then they've come in and beaten a team that is Canada's favorite to to win everything uh, in in the <laughs> NHL and any other sport that you want to put the Leafs in. They're world beaters. So their mentality right now against Carolina is we're, we're, not, we're not limited by anything. We are defying all expectations. We are still the underdog no matter where we stand in a series. When you look at the Florida Panthers, guys, Aaron, I'll, I'll get back to you in just a sec. We did videos this season saying what's wrong with the Panthers. I can remember exactly yeah. that's what we said and talked about. But from a Carolina perspective, Wardo, they've been good all year. They've been consistent all year. What's their mindset heading into this series? Well, I think they have to lean on what the, the hand they've been dealt is. And that's Sveshnikov's not in the lineup. Pacioretty clearly wasn't there for most of the season, but you're lacking scoring. So what you have to lean on is your identity. You have to lean on your system. They beat the Islanders. It was kind of a ho-hum series, but those two teams very play very similar styles. Dump it in, retrieve it, create offense off of that. What started really shining through in the Jersey series for Carolina was the uh, sum of all parts forward grouping and the depth on D, right? This this D core is as talented as any in the National Hockey League. And everybody talks about Slavin and they, they talk about Pesci and then they go to Burns. But the forgotten guy like Brady Shea, who's putting up great numbers and he's been fantastic in the shutdown. And Goss to spare and Chatfield is your third pairing. Probably a second pairing, maybe even a first for some teams around the National Hockey League. So they've been great. I think where... 
Carolina really is lacking coming into the series is they don't have a matchup for Bobrovsky. I mean, at some point in the Jersey series, Carolina was considering putting in Ranta uh, and only didn't go in because he didn't feel well. So there's kind of that, that, that carnival of goaltending going on back there. It's whoever can step up at the right time right now will use. But from a grouping, I think this Carolina team is going to play a very similar style to what they've done all season, and that's get the puck, have no turnovers, move it out of your defensive zone into the neutral, move it from the neutral into the offensive zone, forecheck relentlessly. And they've got to counter what really stalemated uh, Toronto, and that was Florida's ability to, to hem them up in, in, the, in the neutral zone. Toronto could not get through the neutral zone. Marner, uh, Tavares, all those guys were neutralized because of the fact that turnovers, cough-ups, I mean, uh, lack of ability to transition properly. And it was, it was – um, to the benefit of how Florida played their system that hemmed up the Toronto Maple Leafs. So I think both teams by now after two series know what they're up against. It's who can be who they are, who, who can they be uh, quickly, can they get to their identity before the other team does and play that style through the series. Gentle, gentlemen, thank you very much for this. It's the Florida Panthers and it's the Carolina Hurricanes game one of the Eastern Conference final and our coverage here on the fourth period is presented by Bodog.